Kit is the newest legendary brawler coming to the game, and he's also the first support legendary brawler and definitely deserves this rarity. Now, Kit is the first brawler in the Startoon studio, and I guess he was really famous at one point because he has a lot of fans. If you ask me, I think he's probably heavily inspired after Disney's Mickey Mouse. And his brawler description states that he frequently thinks about getting back to the business and that he really was a top-notch actor, so maybe one day he'll return to the big screen. Kit's title is Meow, and he's got a very big personality. You are stuck with me, meow. Uh, wh where, where did that small red dot go? Has it really come to this? Kit's main attack is Claws. This is a pretty basic attack where Kit swipes his claws in a short range fan shape, damaging everything that it touches. Very similar to BB's main attack without the delay. His attack is pretty simple, but it's his super where things get really interesting. Kit's super is Carry Me. Kit's super can be used on an enemy or a teammate. If he jumps onto an enemy, he instantly deals 1,600 damage to them and stays latched on for another two seconds. During those two seconds, the enemy takes 250 damage each second and they're also stunned the entire time. Now if he latches onto one of his teammates, he'll heal them for 600 HP every second that he's on them. He also stays attached to teammates for 10 seconds and the only way to get him off sooner is to kill the brawler he's attached to. Now not only does he heal during this, but he gets an entire new main attack to use. He throws balls of yarn that explode on the ground and it's sort of a combination between Dynamite's and Sprout's attack except way stronger. Another interesting thing is that when Kit latches onto a teammate, his super instantly recharges and he can use it again to dismount early if he wants. Now if he doesn't, he can just use his super to hop right back onto the brawler however he wants when he gets off. Keep in mind that Kit can't be hit by anything while attached to a teammate, and he's not even affected by status effects like stuns, poison, or fire damage. Kit's first gadget is Cardboard Box. He covers himself in a cardboard box and becomes invisible to enemies for a few seconds. Just like Leon Super, if you attack while activating this gadget, you'll instantly lose the cardboard box and become visible again. And not only does this make Kit invisible, but it also speeds up his auto-charging Super by 100%. So it will now charge twice as fast. Kit's second gadget is Cheeseburger. This gadget can only be activated if Kit is attached to a teammate. It instantly heals both himself and his teammate for 40% of the total health, so it's gonna be very effective on tanky brawlers. Kit's first star power is Power Hungry. Normally, power cubes improve a brawler's damage by 10% and their health by 400. This star power doesn't affect Kit health at all, but it doubles the damage buff that he gets from every power cube. For example, if he has 10 power cubes, instead of dealing double his normal damage, he deals triple his normal damage. Now this star power is useless in a lot of the 3v3 game modes, but it's broken in Showdown, and you can even use it during Mega Pig to give your team a massive advantage. Kit's second star power is Overly Attached. When Kit latches onto one of his teammates, this star power will keep him latched for 5 extra seconds, which is 15 total seconds. Now keep in mind that that's an extra 5 seconds of heals, which is actually kind of a lot from Kit. Keep in mind that this only works for his teammates, so the star power will not extend the time of the super if he latches onto an enemy. Now, even though Kit does have a really short range while he's not attached to a brawler, he makes up for it because he has a trait that charges his super automatically over time. Now let's compare Kit to all the other brawlers in the Brawl Stars Olympics, starting off with his worst test, the area test. Kit doesn't have a teammate to latch onto in this test, so he has to rely on his main attack since his gadgets don't deal any damage either. He breaks 14 total skulls, which puts him in 76th place or dead last. Honestly, this is not a great representation of how well Kit is going to be at dealing damage in an area because when he is attached to another brawler, he's actually quite good. Next is the one second DPS test. Now, since the only place to measure this test is the training cave, Kit does not get any help from his super, but he's at least able to unload three of his ammo within one second, so he deals 4,800 damage and gets 70th place. Next is the boss test. I'm sorry, I gotta show all these ones where he's not very good, but unfortunately, the boss test can only be done in the training cave where Kit cannot use his super at at all. But his reload speed is honestly one of the fastest in the game, so he still manages to beat a few brawlers with only his main attack. Kit defeats the boss in 1 minute 7 seconds, and that puts him in 63rd place. And once again, is not a good representation of how much damage Kit can do over the course of an entire match. Next, we have the survival test. Now, if brawlers were allowed to avoid shots in this test, Kit could have bought some time by using his cardboard box gadget.
gadget. But he just has his 6,000 health to depend on and nothing else. He survives for 15.2 seconds and ties with Nico and Ruffs for 60th place. Next is the attack range test. With Kit's regular attack, he's only able to reach across three and one third tiles, but his yarn bombs go much further. I measured as accurately as I could outside the training area, and it looks like he throws them seven tiles away and they have a blast radius of one and one third tiles. That reaches eight and one third tiles in total, so Kit ties with Maisie, Janet, Max, Gale, and Dynamite for 45th place. I mentioned Dynamite because their attacks are very similar. Next is the supercharged test, and this was a little tough to measure since Kit's super is always charging a little bit automatically. I also used his cardboard box gadget after the first three shots since it increases his supercharging rate. But Kit's reload speed is so fast that it basically doesn't make a difference. Kit charges his super in 2.5 seconds and he ties with Ruffs and B for 46th place. Next is the super range test. Now Kit can leap six and one third tiles across with his super, but the super actually has a radius of two and two third tiles, so he doesn't have to land directly on a target for a super to work, which is good because that would be very difficult to land. That is nine tiles in total, so Kit ties with Amber, Sam, Otis, and Charlie for 44th place. Next is the assassin test. Kit unloads three quick yarn bombs, but he actually doesn't have any time to reload a fourth in those three seconds. Instead, he uses his super to hop off his teammate so that his reload speed gets way faster and he's able to get one swipe in for some extra damage. Kit Kit deals 13,600 damage in total, which puts him in 35th place. Next is the super damage test. If Kit pounces on an enemy, he'll immediately deal 1,600 damage and then 250 damage per second for the next two seconds. That adds up to 2,100 damage in total, so Kit ties with Sam and Ash for 34th place. Next, we have the test where Kit is better than over half of the brawlers in, starting off with the auto-aim test. Now, Kit's regular attack hits targets instantly as long as they are within range, and his yarn bombs don't even come close to that distance since he throws them up too high. He hits Nita from five tiles away and does 1,600 damage, so he gets 26th place. Next, we have the splash test, and there aren't very many situations where Kit's first star power comes in handy, but the splash test is one of them. Kit's able to hit most of the boxes with his attack, and after he breaks them open, he's so strong that he only needs one ammo to break the rest. He completes the splash test in 7.2 seconds and gets 21st place. Up next is the race test. Now, Kit already has a very fast movement speed, so he's faster than most brawlers in the game. He can also use his super to leap forward and get a head start even though he doesn't hit anything with it. Kit crosses the finish line in 9.1 seconds and that puts him in 17th place. Next we have the three attack kill test. Now Kit's regular attack damage is 1,600, but his yarn bombs deal 4,000 damage each. So three of them adds up to 12,000 damage, which is enough to take out every brawler in the game except for Frank. So Kit ties with Bull for this test in 13th place. Next is the swarm test and Kit stays in the middle of the swarm so he can take out one corner at a time. He deals enough damage to one of the bots to take it out in a single hit, so it only requires four ammo to destroy all of them. He defeats the swarm in 2.8 seconds, which puts him in 12th place. Next, we have the reload test. Now, the only brawler in the game with the regular three ammo bars and no abilities to help increase reload speed that has a faster reload speed than Kit is Edgar. I know that's a little bit of a mouthful, but Kit has some of the fastest unload speed and reload speed in the game. He reloads 10 shots in 11.1 seconds, which puts him in eighth place. But his best test is the box test. Even though Kit can only use his main attack in this test, it's able to hit every box in the group at the same time. Not only that, but this is another one of the few tests where his first star power actually helps out quite a bit. He finishes the box test in 25.3 seconds and gets sixth place. Now I'll admit that the Brawl Stars Olympics are a little bit weird to try and measure Kit's abilities because a lot of them rely on his super and he's not able to use his super in some of the tests. So let's talk about how strong I think he's going to be in every single game mode, starting off with gem grab. And honestly, Kit is such a good support brawler for a gem carrier to have. Not only does he continue to heal them, but if the gem carrier goes down, Kit's gonna be right there to swoop up all the gems and then super away with them. His super is even great for offense because if he latches onto an enemy gem carrier, they'll be completely stunned for a couple seconds, which makes for a very easy kill for his teammates easily an S tier brawler for gem grab. And honestly, I think he's an S tier brawler for Brawl Ball as well. Aside from Kit just being extremely powerful overall, he gets even more use 
out of his versatile super by using it to just shoot the ball forward and then super up to it for sneaky goals, right? The stun for a super is going to be good on defense as well, since the enemy has to drop the ball while Kit is latched onto them. Additionally, his reload speed and movement speed are very fast, which is always a plus for Brawl Ball. Next, we have Heist, and I don't think you have to worry about leaving an enemy Kit alone on your Heist safe, which is the only thing holding him back from being S tier in Heist. And he honestly doesn't even have low DPS over time. It's just not the best in comparison to a lot of other brawlers, at least not when he's latched onto a teammate. But keep an enemy alive near the safe while he's also chipping away at it with balls of yarn. Seems like he's going to do really well in this mode. Maybe even if he latches onto another thrower, they could just throw over walls. I don't know. He's, he's going to be interesting. I think the A tier is a safe bet for Heist, although he might just be so strong overall that he's S tier and everything. <laughs> Next, we have Wipeout, though. And the only reason why I'm not putting Kit in the S tier for this mode is because I feel like if the enemy is able to kill the brawler that Kit is attached to, they're also probably in a good position to take Kit out right after since he has such a short range. Also, his super makes for an easy kill on an enemy, but it also leaves him vulnerable in enemy territory. That being said, he's just too strong of a brawler to be anything less of A tier for 3v3 modes, so I think the A tier at least makes sense. Next, we have the hot zone, and latching onto tanky brawlers inside the hot zone is going to be a big problem for the enemy team. And being able to throw such strong attacks will make it easy to regain control of the zone and get enemies out of it. He's definitely an S tier for hot zone as well. And honestly, I'm going to go with S tier for knockout. This game mode might have been a problem for Kit if his super didn't charge automatically, but since it does, he just needs to survive for a bit and then keep attaching himself to teammates in order to keep them alive and have the range to compete with other popular knockout brawlers. Even when the smoke pushes everyone close together, you're basically giving your teammate an extra life, and I think Kit's going to come out on top in a lot of those situations, which is why S tier really is justified. Now we have Solo Showdown, and this is certainly going to be Kit's worst mode, since he won't have teammates to latch onto. However, to make up for it, his first star power can be used to give him additional damage with each power cube he picks up. His star power paired with his super actually turns him into quite the assassin, and I haven't even mentioned his cardboard box gadget that's going to make him a great assassin in every mode. Being able to just turn invisible at the very start of the match may seem honestly pretty broken to me. I do think this solo showdown is going to be his worst game mode, though. As long as he can avoid confrontation early on, though, he might be pretty good. I'm going to go with B tier. He might very well be A tier though. But for Duo Showdown, even just having one teammate makes all the difference for Kit. He's going to have everything that he needs in Solo Showdown, plus more because he'll have a teammate. He has a teammate to help him throw yarn bombs. He has a teammate to help take out whatever enemy he stuns. He has his first star power, which increases damage from his power cubes, and it's pretty easy to get power cubes in Duo Showdown. Even if he doesn't deal a ton of damage to enemies that he's latched onto, he's going to be pretty insane and is absolutely an S tier brawler for Duo Showdown. Make sure you stick around for all of Kit's pins and voice lines and subscribe for sneak peeks and brawl news for future updates. <laughs> what a catastrophe. Catastrophic. Gonna start running out of lives. Ah, finally some rest. Was this ever fun? Back to the internet. Uh, gotta go lick myself. <laughs> now it's personal. But I'm a cat. <sighs> Meow! Meow! You aren't kitten around, are you? Claws are out! Free facelift! Crying cat face. Mark my claws. You'll remember this moment. Now it's my turn. <coughs> Perfect. You are gonna cry, aren't you? Cat's got your tongue? Yes, I have. You've got a face for failure. Smartphones, stupid people. Feline good. Making everyone else look good. Well done. You aimed low and managed to miss the mark. Have waited all my nine lives for this moment. I'm a cat. Of course I win. Live, love, laugh, and lick. Something smells fishy here. And I love it. Of course. I'm possum! Thrilled to be here. Really? Wow, I'm a cat. Try to get over it. Meow! Sorry, got caught up in the moment. Cat's out of the bag. Don't start believing. Uh, wh where, where did that small red dot go? Oh, did I smell tuna? Come on, let's get physical. Physical! Has it really come to this? <laughs> Feline frenzy! Pounce, flounce, and bounce! Friends forever! You are stuck with me! Meow!
Scars of Love.